And now, WPGC FM 95.5 presents Community Focus with Dr. Justine Love. Welcome back to Community Focus. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Love. Well, school has started, and I'm always excited when I have an opportunity to talk to uh, fellow educators. And the fact that I'm in the studio with one of my sheroes, one that set the bar, that made life the amazing for the United States, the world, but has set the template that our young girls and boys can follow suit with her, and that's Dr. Maya Angelou. So I'm joined in the studio with uh, Dr. Heather Washington, who is the Chief Executive Office of Maya Angelou Schools and C Forever Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited. You know what? That is a, a, a such a strong name to carry and to be a part of. I mean, your expectations for our students have to be amazing. When they walk in the building, they have to walk in her image. Yes, it is quite the name. Uh, and to tie it with the C Forever Foundation means that we're really committed to trying helping our students succeed. So No, we're not trying. We are going to help our children succeed. We do. We do everything that we possibly can to help them succeed and to really kind of see forever. That's really what our goal is. And I like that, see forever. You know, it's thinking outside of the box, looking beyond what's right in front of you. So tell me a little bit about the school. Sure. So uh, we are 17 years old. Wow. Uh, Started here in the district. Uh, and initially uh, started as a school that opened up for young students who were uh, involved with the juvenile justice system mm-hmm. uh, and did wanted some schooling opportunities, wanted opportunities to actually be able to choose a different life um, and, and not be associated with the streets, but actually get an education. And they wanted teachers that listened to them, uh, people that cared for them and heard them and enabled them to be able to see forever. So uh, the school operates now in lower income areas in D.C., uh, and we're committed to making sure that our students, particularly those students who haven't been successful in other schools, can have an opportunity to succeed in our setting. Uh, We try to have a lot of caring adults that work pretty intensively with our students. Um, We really try to personalize what we do and how we work with our students. Um, And then ask them, what do they want to accomplish? And if they're not quite sure, we try to help them set a path to be able to do that. I like that set a path. you got to have a master plan. Exactly. More than a dream. Yeah, more than a dream. You have to have a plan so you can achieve your dream. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the the fact that you said that you have uh, your faculty and your support staff and everybody there is caring adults, you know, and... Young people need that. I mean, I can I can be very reflective. I can still name every teacher I had from the kindergarten up through college. Exactly. And that means that they changed my life. Mm-hmm. And that's why I chose education to go into because of that one person that taught me how to read. Yeah. Well, we try to really surround our students with people. Now, sometimes they make their own relationships, right? Sure. But we want... Uh, our adults and we work with our staff pretty intensively around making sure that we're supporting our students and trying to figure out what it is that they need. Sometimes they can articulate those needs, sometimes they can't. Right. But it's our job as the professionals to be able to meet those needs and then help them see what it is that they need. So what makes the Dr. Maya Angelou schools different from the other area charter schools? So the school uh, actually uh, received its name from a student contest uh, in the early days. I didn't know that. So uh, originally we were the See Forever Foundation and the See Forever Public Charter School. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the students thought, well, what else could we we name the school? Uh, And so they had an essay contest and a student or an alum by the name of Shirty Hendricks wrote an essay about why the school should be named after Dr. Angelo. Uh, And in her essay, she talked about how Dr. Angelo overcame a number of struggles, uh, had uh, been sexually assaulted, uh, experienced a lot of trauma. She was pregnant by the age of 16, had been uh, mute for a period of time prior to that, uh, displaced, moved to San Francisco, uh, and ultimately became a, a young mother and overcame many of those obstacles and to ultimately become the international icon that that she was. 
um, t- self-taught in languages, civil rights leader, essay, essayist, poet, uh, and so poet many. Poet laureate. Poet laureate, exactly. Uh, and so many other uh, amazing accomplishments uh, throughout her life, uh, with mother being one of them. And so uh, the students felt like it was appropriate to name a school after her, uh, that they could see themselves following in her footsteps. So where's your alumni? What Has your alumni gone to college and graduated the one that named the Gave the school its name? Yes. So we actually have a pretty big emphasis on life after Maya. Uh, And that's one of the things that that makes us distinct, I think, from a lot of other schools. We uh, were really committed to college and career, as it's called now, in in the early days and really trying to prepare our students. So most of our students, about 70, 80 percent of our students actually go on um, to some form of post-secondary after they leave us. And we work with them starting in ninth grade to actually be able to build that plan. Uh, So nothing comes as a surprise. We don't have students that are like, oh, I don't know where I'm going. They may be uncertain about the plan that they're currently working on at 12th or 11th grade and thinking about changing that. But most of our students, we start with them very early on and building that plan, telling them they can change their mind, but they have to have a plan. Oh, yeah, Um, and and it's all right to change your mind. I think I changed my mind in college a couple of times, like, Dropped that class. I didn't like that. <laughs> but you know what? I still, I saw forever. Right. And I followed through and I had a plan because the plan was to get my degree. We also talk about a plan of discovery, right? That's also the yes. self-discovery plan is pretty important. Being able to know yourself, figure out what your limitations are. What are the right colleges for you? What would be the right fit and the best place for you to go? You're right. Um, and it doesn't always needs. have to be college. It doesn't always have to be You college. know, because there are so many important careers out here. You know, I, I think of one particular one that is a plumber. Yes. You know, I need a plumber. Right. If something happens in my house and there's water coming up everywhere, I don't care how much money it costs. Just fix it. Exactly. And we do spend a lot of time saying in order to be a plumber, these are the steps that you right. have to take. And it still involves something after Maya. You're not going to be ready to be a plumber the day you leave Maya. Right. Uh, So it involves you thinking about a lifelong learning plan to get where you need to be. So did our students, and I call them our students because I'm a citizen of the world and, you know, I'm a student. Mm -hmm. So did they actually get the honor of being in her presence Sitting at her footsteps, you know, sitting at her feet, just listening to that such a bigger than life individual. I mean, and what's such a gentle calmness that they actually get to meet Dr. Meyer. Yes. Uh, so Dr. Angela would come to all of our annual fundraisers. So she actually attended, I think, 15. Wow. Uh, and this last year, she wasn't able to join us because uh, our health was deteriorating. Right. But she did join us by satellite. Um, wow. And she asked to see their, be and be a part of, via satellite, the entire uh, fundraiser. But she would come every year, and uh, usually she was our, you know, the feature. Uh, and she would sing uh, in the early days, sashay a little bit, dance, <laughs> um, but give a charge to the students about they were already bought and paid for, and that life expected more of them, that she expected more of them, right. that there were so many opportunities that they had. So she would always issue a charge, I would say, mm-hmm. to all of our students about what was expected of them. But she would also speak to the staff um, and tell them how important it was the work that they were doing to develop children and students and youth, um, that the investments that they were making would pay off. Uh, so she really came to energize and innovate everyone. Uh, and some of the students talk about how they would be nervous, you know, introducing her or nervous around mm-hmm. her. And she would just say, come on, sit down, sit down, come talk to me. Right. Um, and really kind of encourage them uh, and just talk to them like you and I are talking right now. Well, you know, I, I, one thing that I do know as a parent, you know, when you are trying to choose what educational process that you want your child to be a part of and for them to have the most success you know, you have to do your research. I can't imagine why someone would not want their child to come to your school. I mean, you know, you do, and I've been to the school several times, you do have the most caring, embracing, engaging, and empowering faculty. It is a family there, and you feel that sense of family when you're there 
among them. I guess I'm telling parents, like, if you want your child to be there, that's where you need to be. I think I'm doing your <laughs> You're commercial. You're doing my job. <laughs> but, the, you know, I mean, is it difficult for them to get in? I mean, you know, school is getting ready to start or, you know, for some of us, school has already started and they're still vacillating which direction they want to go in. Why choose Dr. Maya Angelou schools? Because we will help them find their way. Help them f- and see forever. And see forever. Um, and will help sort of that dream become reality, help build the path um, and do it step by step, day by day with them. Uh, and so I think that that's what we offer that's very different than most schools uh, in the city. And we're really proud to be able to do that. And we really uh, pride ourselves on having that relationship with students and building that sense of family that you say that you've seen uh, when you've come to visit us. So. Now, you know, the other thing that I like that is very important to me is once you graduate, you know, you know, you, the people sign a yearbook and you hug, you kiss and goodbye. But you all do something very unique that I really appreciate is, you know, because there are some children that still continually need that extra stroking that extra push to you know to make sure that they do see forever that they still stay on time. so do you really keep up with your graduates once they have left the arms we do we do we do in formal and informal ways we have um, uh, folks that are dedicated to work with our alumni uh, and they follow up with them they check on them in college they visit them uh, at our various schools if they've gone on to college if they're thinking about going back to college, helping them get scholarships. Uh, And so we do have a pretty extensive formal program that works with our students because we realize that we've built so much of a relationship with them uh, and we've worked with them so intensively that we can continue to do that. Sometimes our students are intimidated when they go to another setting. Oh yeah. Where do I get help? How do we get help? So we like to be able to be a broker, if you will, and say, okay, well, this is what happens and this is the way in which you need to speak with your financial aid officer. Or um, Here we have some scholarship supports and some partners here that we can connect you to to help you. Uh, And so we continue to do that, but we also do it informally. A lot of our students, it's great around Christmas time uh, and graduation time to see so many of our students, our alums come back to talk with our teachers and our staff. Uh, get a little bit more push and a little encouragement to continue doing what they're doing. Um, but often around Christmas time, when our college students come back from break, mm-hmm. we'll see our halls will be flooded with so many alums uh, that come back to meet our teachers. So we definitely do both formally and informally really try and work with our students long after they leave us. And we maintain those ties and those relationships. We're really happy to do that. Well, Dr. Heather, I know that it takes a village to raise a child. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the village is not just parents, it's the community in general. So do you need, are you looking, what skill sets are you looking for for volunteers? Or do you need volunteers in the school? Yeah, we definitely have relationships with a lot of partners. uh, And we look for volunteers with those partners. But also if people are willing to volunteer um, and work with us with a variety of wraparound services that we have for our students we're interested in having them uh, come and do that. We try and offer our students a lot of social emotional support, a lot of managing their relationships. And so folks who have backgrounds in working with collaboratively with uh, other people and backgrounds in psychology and you know just working with students would be helpful to us. Uh, so folks who have uh, experience working with careers, we really try to sort of map our students early on on possible career options. Uh, and so having volunteers that work with us on on setting those expectations, helping students think about college. Uh, so we're always happy to have volunteers um, work with our students, work with our staff, to work with our students to help them be successful. Well, uh, again, that's one of my favorite places to come. I look forward to when the school year starts. And and I have to say this for you that don't realize, you know, I've encountered some of your students that, you know, we do this great prom event, and I have seen several students that have come from your school to come and get their prom attire. And they have a swag about them when they walk in because they know that they are matriculating and moving on to, you know, to see forever, and they have a plan. But when they come and they are so polite and so 
you know, appreciative. Because sometimes, you know, people forget to say thank you, but they always say thank you. So that speaks volumes to your staff and to their parents and to the community at large that they are living in that, you know, those pearls have been dropped on them and they are using those pearls when they interact with people that they ordinarily wouldn't know. So if we want some information about school, how can I get some more information for our listeners? Sure. Uh, Well, certainly from our website, it's www.cforever.org. Or you may call the See Forever Foundation. The number there is 202-797-8250. And can you repeat it one more time? Because if you're like me, I don't have a pen. Sure. Uh, That number again is 202-797-8250. Or the See Forever website, which is www seeforever.org and on that note I want to thank you for joining us this morning and I can't wait to come to school because I'm ready to come to school and see forever and hope something helps some folks to see forever on their master plan we'd love to have you thank you Dr. Love it is my pleasure you've been listening to Community Focus